Happy New Year. Welcome back to the first episode in 2021 of the Do You Know Drones micro podcast. I'm Jason, your host, and I hope that you are enjoying the first few days of 2021 with friends and family. This episode is brought to you by Skywatch AI Drone Insurance. Skywatch provides flexible insurance plans specifically designed for drone professionals and companies across the industry. From aerial photography and inspections to drone deliveries and light shows. With Skywatch, you can fly with peace of mind. With advanced coverage tailored to your needs, available online, visit www.skywatch.ai to get started. I've seen a lot of different videos out there responding to the new remote ID and operations overall people, final rulings. One thing that, I'm, that I haven't seen that I believe is missing is to start to dive into, regardless of what happens, if people start flying at night, if pilots are flying at night, whether they're part 107 or a hobbyist, there's going to be some things. So we know that the test, if you're part 107, is going to change to uh, take in some of these night operations uh, principles. And we're gonna talk about one of them today. That is night vision illusions and dark adaptation. So we're gonna talk about some of the things that happen at night that don't happen during the day because of our, some aerial, aerial medical factors, our eyes. Basically the ways our eyes operate at night is different than during the day. Rods versus cones, there's lots of different things that change during that. So and I've seen a lot of different people talk about different gear, different drones, drone sizes. You know, it, There's a lot of things to talk about, absolutely. I want to talk about something that I think that I've experienced. So I do have my part 107, 107.29 night waiver. I have had a few night operations under my belt. It is different. It is more stressful. It is more challenging. It, it requires not only just a strobe that you can see from three statute miles away, which is still a requirement, but also requires you to understand some of these aeromedical factors that, that happen because you're operating at night. So let's get into the top five night visual illusions that you will encounter when you are operating at night. Number one, autokinesis. Autokinesis is caused when you're staring at a light source, a bright light against a dark background for more than just a few seconds. After about eight to 10 seconds, that object appears to move. Like, it, but it's not, it's not actually moving. If you remember back the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020, here in Colorado, uh, there were all of those those drone lights, all those reporting of all the drone lights in Colorado and Nebraska skies. Um, I would say that a lot of those, and trust me, we were interviewed by those, that we were interviewed about those. There's a lot that was going on. Could have there been drones? Sure. Do I think autokinesis was to blame for a lot of the sightings? Yeah. Venus was up in the sky, it was a bright light, and people were staring at it. And when you stare at anything because of autokinesis, it appears to move. And so it looks like it's a moving object in the sky. So they're gonna be checking aeronautical charts, they're checking flight plans, there's no planes flying, that's gotta be a drone. So most part, it probably wasn't a drone, it's probably just autokinesis. Number two, false horizon. False horizon occurs when the natural horizon is obscured or if it's not readily apparent. So if you're flying over a city, some of the flying that I've done over a bright lights, the city, the city lights, and the stars tend to get obscured. They tend to blend together and you don't know which one's which. Um, when you're flying, you're actually flying in general aviation, it's a much bigger problem. Here, obviously you have instrumentation. You can look at your controller to see what the horizon, the actual true horizon is, but also understanding what's in your airspace, what buildings are there, if is there a lake, um, is there something that can cause this false horizon? Just having a basic understanding of where you're flying can usually, uh, when you're flying a drone and you're actually on the ground, can help you with false horizon. Number three, reverse perspective illusion. Whew, that's a tongue twister. Reversible perspective illusion. Reversible perspective illusion. Whew. So that is at night. An aircraft or a drone, it, this, I've seen this with helicopters before operating close to the airspace, some, especially if they're flying kind of low or even if they're a little further away, it appears to be moving away from the drone when it's actually, or coming towards it when it's actually flying parallel. So this actually happens when the, the lights in the relative position to the horizon, if they're getting brighter, then it, it, it's approaching. If it's getting dimmer, 
then it's going away. So that's kind of like how you can mitigate it like based on understanding the navigation lights, whether it's red or it's green or it's white. That's just if, and if it's approaching you, it's gonna get brighter. And if it's going away, it's gonna get dimmer. Uh, so that's just situational awareness. And you can also, if you're operating at night with a visual observer, which is required if you're part 107, highly recommended if you are a hobbyist or flying recreationally, communication is going to be key with your uh, visual observer, making sure that you both have an understanding of the uh, aircraft's position relative to everything in its airspace. I actually recommend visiting where you're going to be flying at night that day to understand just the geometry of where everything's are, the, the positions of things, where lights are, where, where you can be taking off landing, what potential hazards. A good risk assessment will, will mitigate a lot of these factors. Four is size distance illusion. Now this is kind of the opposite. So if there's an actual tower or something, a stationary light and it's getting brighter, it's gonna look like it's coming towards you. If it's getting dimmer, it's gonna look like it's going away from you. When in, in reality, it's staying the same, it, you haven't, it's just stationary. So that one's a tough one for a lot of folks because it's kind of the opposite of reversible perspective illusion. Um, but if it's actually getting brighter and dimmer than in its stationary, it may this be this visual illusion. Number five is flicker vertigo. And now this hasn't happened to me, but if there's a light flickering at like four to 20 cycles per second, and you're standing underneath it, like a, a light pole or something or a flickering light, and you're standing on that, it can make you sick. If you can start to feel nauseous at night, um, and maybe vomit or, or worse. Some people it, it's even worse. For the most part, you can prevent um, a lot of these, what a lot of these problems by scanning, by just making sure that you're using proper scanning techniques, um, looking around, your aircraft at five to 10 degree increments will, will save you from having a lot of these illusions happen to you. Um, and they do work. So during the daytime, you can stare right at something and it's fine because that's where your, your you know, that's where the focus is. At night, that becomes a blind spot. So you have to look around the object to see it clearly and brightly. So these are all things that you can, these are some of the illusions that are out there. That's it. So if, if you found this information helpful, um, I'm going to be putting out these videos every week. You know, make sure you subscribe, make sure you uh, ding the bell so you get the notifications. Make sure you like this um, and, and comments. Please comment. I will get back to everyone that comments, answer as many questions as I possibly can. If I don't have answers, I will get them for you. For you. We're all in this together. I hope you uh, fly safe and I'll catch you next time on the Do You Know Drones micro podcast. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.